Oh, well, yet again, a family member has brought around a PC that has a problem. Yes, as our family gets bigger, <laughs> I end up with more PCs in my office. Yes. So, um, this one apparently is dead. Yeah, um, no one, idea. One no. day the owner just went to turn it on and nothing happened. Uh, it's about, it's a three-year-old PC, uh, at least three years old. The um, seal on the back of the PC has not been broken. Now, um, one, one thing, if you're going to fix anybody's PC or try and help them fix the computer, um, also uh, always make sure that um, if you're going to break any warranty seals or anything else like that on a computer, you check that it's okay with the owner first. The lights come on. I can smell electrical burning smells. Mm. Yeah. It's a distinct smell, and, and once you've once you've smelled it before. It's unmistakable. Something, something major has gone wrong with this computer. That's not good. You can smell it almost instantly. So uh, let's turn this baby off and turn off the power supply there. And uh, we'll have a look at the camera and have a look, shall we? And if you have a close look, as you can see, most of the, the fins on the CPU fan have been completely blocked, um, preventing any proper airflow. There is a lot of dust in here, in the power supply, in the fan itself. Um, at web cobwebs here. It, it definitely hasn't been tampered with whatsoever. Um, excess dust like this, and especially if you get any moisture in there, is just a recipe for disaster. The problem is that if your CPU really isn't getting enough cooling because of that amount of dust, you could actually damage the CPU. Yeah, that that is one one possible um, explanation here. But also that amount of dust in any computer combined with condensation, moisture in the air, it is winter time so it's died during winter, um, it's been fairly wet lately, so um, yeah, you get moisture going through the system as well and settling and basically creating, um, creating uh, yeah, a disaster area inside of a computer. System. So I mean just a few seconds there, it's all took, a vacuum cleaner can do the same thing if it's got a plastic nozzle on the end to suck the dust out rather than blowing it out like I've just done. Um, that air compressor just works best for me. And also there was still so much dust inside that power supply. It was, um, yeah, I, I would say it was probably the cause of it dying in the first place, but we will attempt to power it up again and see yeah, what happens there was now. actually some power, you could hear the components go, so it's just a question now whether or not any damage has been caused. Um, By that which would, yeah, mean that something might need to be replaced. Here again, the power button. So the CPU fan is spinning, not getting any hard, I'm trying to listen here and I can't, I'm not getting any hard drive activation or anything else kind of wearing up whatsoever. Faster CPU is turning on. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, reset the BIOS. Okay, so we, I can't see any um, clear CMOS jumper here. There is a couple of jumpers here, but the motherboard itself is not marked, um, which is fairly unusual for us. So it's usually fairly good with this, but this is one of their their uh, brand, uh, not brand, but um, cheaper motherboards. It's a SIS chipset motherboard. We will um, come in, well, the other way to clear the CMOS is actually just to remove the CMOS battery. So let's get a little screwdriver here, and uh, it's just a little clip, which should pop off nice and easily. There we go. Batteries just drop straight out there, um, like so. Now, if that's uh, not plugged into power, and we try and power it up, that should theoretically drain all the power out of the motherboard and that's going to clear the CMOS completely, the BIOS there. So we'll plug the power back in and we'll give this another attempt. With uh, the CMOS completely cleared, we are not getting any response whatsoever. The, uh, the next stage of, uh, of the testing that I need to do is res reseating things like the RAM and the CPU and whatever else. The next thing I'm going to do is actually just remove the CPU. So there's quite a bit of thermal paste here on the CPU. Um, yeah, maybe a little bit too much. That's that's just initially from from the actual fan itself. It doesn't seem to be any physical damage to the CPU itself. It does look there's no burnt spots or anything else on it. So I'm going to clean the CPU off. Um, I'm going to pop it back in there and check it all out once we've got some nice fresh thermal paste on there. Okay, so I've used a tissue to clean off all the uh, thermal paste off the old uh, oh, sorry all the old thermal paste off the CPU itself and also off the bottom of the Intel provided uh, heatsink fan combo. Now uh, we're just going to line up the keys on the CPU and pop it back in its socket, like so. It sits there like that. Pop the lid down and secure it like that. Now it's got a, a tube of old thermal paste which I've had around for many, many years. You don't use a lot of thermal paste whatsoever. 
CPU is nice and fixed there. So again, now that we've uh, flipped the switch, yeah, we've reseated the CPU basically, cleaned up the old thermal paste. We're going to try and re restart this PC again. Yet again, we get absolutely nothing whatsoever yeah. wrong. Well, that's not surprising because it, it didn't look like the CPU you know, had mm. any damage at all. No, so. no. Um, the uh, the next logical choice would be to test the power supply. To uh, allow easier access to all the plugs and all there, I'm actually going to remove the hard drive and stuff like that for the time being. Unplug the hard drive. Everything was neatly tied up, which is really good to see in, uh, in any PC. Um, all the cables were tied up out of the way. Unplug the power supply from the motherboard. Optical drive there and from the drive. So that's all there. The power supply, the old power supply cables there tied up in a bundle. What I'm going to do is uh, use this Antec modular power supply. It's uh, one I have on my test bed. It's a 550 watt power supply. So yeah, I'll just plug this uh, power supply into the motherboard. It's a 24 pin power supply. I'm not going to use the, the extra four pins. It doesn't require it for this particular motherboard. It plugs in perfectly there. That there, the four pin, and again the four pin should plug in there nicely, just like so. Make sure everything's out of the way. We will plot change the power to the. I am not getting anything on the screen whatsoever. So it does look like we have a dead motherboard. Okay, I've come to the conclusion that I'm pretty sure the motherboard is dead. This particular little circuit board will analyse the, the uh, system BIOS and tell me exactly what's going wrong with the board itself. Uh, if there's a CPU error or if there's a memory error or a video card error, etc. Unfortunately, these type of devices are not easy to come by. Um, I've worked in the industry for quite some time, that's the reason I have it. But a lot of new motherboards do have this technology built into the top of the motherboard in a, uh, a LED display on top of the motherboard. Uh, sometimes it might be a, like MSI have a output, a USB output, which have four light indicators which tell you similar type of things. This is code, light codes. So I'm going to plug this in, turn it on and see what it actually says. If it comes up with a big FF, it means we've got a dead motherboard. And there it is, FF. Yes. So we have a dead motherboard. Now, the most likely reason for this motherboard dying was due to the amount of dust in there. Possibly, or, or it, could, yeah, it could just be luck of the draw, basically. Yeah, I mean, motherboards do just die, it's a yeah. few years old. So all these things combined, um, it, it's just really terrible for PCs. Yeah. Clean your PC out every now and then. Put a vacuum in it or whatever else, just be very careful, obviously. Um, but, uh, you know, even just blowing out the fans at the back and the front, just getting a bit of extra... So, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a bit of extra airflow through the case <laughs> um, can help help solve uh, any airflow issues that you might have. Basically, I mean, they can take the hardware, all the other hardware, aside mm -hmm. from the motherboard, and it would be a good idea to get rid of the power supply the circumstances well, as well. What we might do is actually, in the next series, we might actually look at upgrading a PC at this type of level. We do have a PC yes. here which I do want to upgrade, similar type of components, so we will look at what you can and can't use if you do need to uh, rebuild a system like this. At the very least, you should be able to plug in your hard drive and get your data back off it, yes. so long as nothing was corrupted. That's, that's yeah. one of the things we'll have a look at uh, in the series of upgrading PCs. So we'll look at data recovery and all that type of stuff as well, to make right. sure you don't lose that type of stuff. Yeah.